The Senator Abdullahi Adamui emerges chairman of the National Working Committee after a unity a list. As some still feeling disgruntled as the party out of troubled waters will seek answers this morning. Ahead of the 2023 general elections, we're seeking answers. Should zoning be sacrificed for character, competence and quality of leadership? What are your thoughts? And like always, we will review all the major stories on the front page of the days. Good morning, this is The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. I am Messia Bokpour. It's a beautiful Monday morning, if uh, I'm very correct, and it feels really good to be back on your screen again. Yes, uh, Messi, uh, how was your weekend? How did you spend it? I trust you had them. <laughs> so, why well, I just time. feel like you're just doing this for, you know, formality's sake? You already <laughs> know. It was here yesterday. Uh, you, and we yeah, saw. You know how it is. You know, on Friday, I was dancing that, um, uh, you know, yeah, and thank God, despite <laughs> I was looking forward to the weekend and I had just Saturday to us. So I was like happy and all of that. Then today, again, uh, when you reminded that uh, you had to work on Sunday, I don't know. So which do I prefer? Do I want to work on Saturday or do I want to work on Sunday? I don't want to work Saturday or Sunday, mess. I just want to just rest. <laughs> okay, so I, f I feel like the HR should be pay paying attention to this now. <laughs> <laughs> and every other person should be paying attention. Justin doesn't want to work on Saturday and Sunday. But for me, uh, it was just a bit of, you know, Friday getting off. And usually the feeling for Friday is like, you uh, you're out of the world. Uh, say again? You went party. No, could I... Can I afford to party? Yes, I can't. Look I can't. At your hair alone. No, that's not, that's not the point. That's not the point I'm making. I'm just saying, you know, you're so tired that you just want to sleep. Mm, true, true. And so it was a combination of rest mm -hmm. and then walk and, you know, a little bit of fun. So that's it. And mm. then we're back here again. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about some of the things that are trending or that trended them over the weekend. Uh, Kaduna was in the news um, over the weekend. And, um, I felt it was really very alarming. It was almost like a, a terrorist hijack, you know, uh, so-called bandits, you know, attacking an airport. Mercy, if the bandits, you know, had all the leeway to just uh, enter the airport with all of the security, I don't know, went to the tarmac and how, how possible, you know, is that really? How could they just... Uh, enter the airport and attack an airport as um, secure, supposedly secure, uh, as an airport should be. And when I read um, about that, I was like, why are we really headed in this country? Although Kaduna has been in the news for a long time when it comes to um, insecurity, uh, bandit attacks and um, highway robberies and all of that. But for an airport to be attacked by so-called bandits, I think we should just call them what it is. I would say the airport was actually attacked by terrorists. So, um, w which is actually a valid point that you have raised because uh, has called a lot of Nigerians. First of all, I mean, it's made a lot of people react in that direction. I I'd like to say that um, with this, uh, with this situation or with this attack that happened, it just ridiculed really our security, uh, you know, status as a country, and that's what really played out. And the fact that you know bandits can breach the perimeter. Some people are asking that. Uh, do we have a perimeter fencing? Mm. You know, at the airport. I mean, I haven't been to Kaduna, you know, airport, so I can't categorically state. But um, the fact that you know this bandit can actually cross, you know, beat the security details and get into, you know, the wrong way, it calls for a lot of concern. And so that's it. Some people are saying at this point we shouldn't be calling this category of persons bandits. They're this is a terrorist attack. And what happened when this information was put out? Because I was falling, you know, I was on top of the um, situation when I saw the news at first uh, there were a lot of disclaimers some people said it was fake news up until on the 26th today's the 28th so you have um, I'll quickly just run through you know this update that was put out by the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria fan saying that it was a press release that was put out and he says uh, update on bandit attack Kaduna airport the Federal 
Airport Authority of Nigeria fan regrets to state that a group of bandits attacked the runway axis of Kaduna Airport earlier this day. And uh, you have, however, a combined team. I don't know if that's a continuation, but I I'll just read it. However, a combined team of anti-banditry military personnel and criminal investigation unit of fan uh, aviation security department swiftly intervened for rescue operation with one casualty reported in the incident. I mean, so it therefore means that someone was actually killed. Uh, very sad. I mean, it's not something that we should smile about, but this is not good at all for us. Now, it says uh, normalcy has since been restored at the airport, and the team has also recovered motorbikes abandoned by the bandits. Additional heavy reinforcement team from the Nigerian Defense Academy is on ground to ensure safety and security of the airport workers and users as well. Now, this is actually an update that was put out by, you know, FAN on the 26th of March, and so 27, 28, so, you know, you know what we're talking about now. Yeah. But um, it, it constantly brings us to everything that we keep talking about. And so we, we feel it's a joke. Security is very important. We have it seen is, is. how, um, you know, it's it's not just a, a one man's business. It's affecting everybody. And it, it's the audacity. There's so much guts right here. Like I said before, this is ridiculing our security status as a country. And we need to step up the game. Uh, the president, the governors, everybody, all hands must be on deck. But if we call this group of persons bandit, I mean, look at the fact that they recovered motorbikes. Uh, that means that you understand the means of transportation that this persons actually mm -hmm. use. I think that we've been very careless about the issue of security Messi, we and securing the lives have been very of careless. Nigerians. We, we are not putting in know, our, our, our money where our, our mouth is, because the truth is that if we actually took security very seriously, when you hear things like this, like an airport being attacked by so-called local marauders, as it were, it, it, it is really mind-boggling, because I don't understand. An airport should be one of the most secure places of all, because that's like an, an entry and exit point, you know, people come in and go out of a particular state. It's like the first port of call to either a country or a state. So it should really be secure and heavily armed and all of that. But when bandits invade, uh, Kaduna Airport is not just a local airport, it is an international airport, I want to believe. But when things like this happen, you just wonder as if uh, we don't know what we are doing, as if we are bereft of knowledge no, or I, I, we don't want to do point, the right thing, mm, you get. You know, jo Justin, so you talked about the fact that we're not putting our money where our mouth should be. I mean, so you're saying that, you know, money might probably be an issue. Maybe we're not spending enough in terms of that. That necessarily is a point, you know, to some extent. But the issue here is the people people who have been carrying this attack, we have called them bandits. That's the time. Yeah, but but if you see, body no, but, but if you begin to see the activities of this the group of persons, uh, how, how do you describe them? The, the fact that you have a group of persons going to the airport and, you know, what, what was the intention? That's number That's one. That's the thing. What were they going the to hijack the, the air, airplane? Yes. Uh, kill, were they going to kidnap persons? Or uh, you know, kidnap passengers or still what's going what's the what, what's the rationale behind all of that mm. and this has gone beyond you know calling this person's bandit this is a pure you know terror it's a terrorist attack, attack. It's, it's, it's a pure terror attack, attack. Terrorist and how attack. have we acted as a government and not just to tell us that the situation persons? has been brought under control by a fan what are you going to do to make sure that things like this don't happen again to show to ensure that nigerians actually embark on complaints and they actually get to their destination point and not worry about um, if they're going to be attacked no, by no, so-called no. bandits so it, it, i mean it's from the foundation it's the fact that i feel like we have been very careless i don't feel like it shows in our action we as a government have been very careless. You see the carelessness in it. First of all, the fact that we constantly call this group of persons bandit. If you look at the operation, who, who, who do you call a terrorist? I mean, it's really sad, but we have to wake up to the fact and understand that, uh, you know, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Niger, Section 14, uh, you know, would stipulate that security and protection of the lives and welfare of the citizen, paraphrasing, not necessarily, you know, verbatim, is the concern of government. Yes, it is. And there's no excuse whatsoever. Uh, this no, is not the point where we begin to hear, oh, I'm not in charge of the security architect of the state. I'm not in charge of whatever, you know, all of the excuses that we make. But we need to, you know, put our foots down. It's, it's gradually unbecoming. 
and you know we're just joking with it and one day it becomes a menace for us now we're talking about bandits having the guts you know to step into an international airport but we need to move away because we have let's, other let's, trending let's, topics because if we just keep on joking about it uh it, you'll just keep on sounding like a broken record because it's the, the same issues that we keep on having and talking about all the time but also in the news uh, something i'll put a bit of smile to my face at least well i don't have to bother about security patrice ever you know he was at Oshodi Isale, right? Mercy, do you know Oshodi Isale? Mm, I think. Mercy, where is Oshodi Isale? <laughs> Mercy, okay. you only know the island. Let me not even start with you. No, as much as the United States. Justin, don't come at me this morning. Oshodi is where Oshodi is. <laughs> Excuse me. He was um, in, Lake, uh, in Lagos and he visited um, Oshodi on the bridge, the popular Osho the underbridge, uh, or Osho the Isale in uh, the local parlance, and uh, he played chess with children. It was all smiles. Mercy, he was at Osho the Isale. So why, why do you make you, make you look like, you know, we just had it. No, no, Osho the Isale, you know, there's <laughs> No, it's about... fantastic. Okay, but, but calm down now. Okay, I, okay, understand. I'm calm. I'm I mean, calm. I understand Patrice. Uh, hey, well. you, he, you know, he was in Nigeria is a great yes. one. But let's not forget that it's associated with the uh, chess to slums, yes, you yes, know. Yes, and, yes. and that's a good innovation. That's a good one that's been ongoing for us in Nigeria and in Lagos. I think it's been putting up. But most importantly is what happens to the children. I mean, the uh, the, the kids, uh, the children in this particular, uh, you know, region and, you know, the essence of it. I think it's a good one. It's a very good one that it helps uh, strengthen their morale, encourage them, motivates them and gives them all of that, you know, uh, oh. what's it called, uh, strength, give them all of that motivation that they need. So, yes, it's, it's a fantastic one. I think that these kids are, are having a great time. Yes. And I like the fact that, you know, when I saw the videos actually popping up and I saw the pictures, he, you know, it, there was a, a little bit of a blend. You could okay. blend into the system. You could see him. I mean, he could pass for a Nigerian. You yes. never can tell until you're being told that that's Patrice. Yes. And so, yes, that's a beautiful one. Great it story is. to see. It that, is. Like you said, it uh, is very, very Initiative. We're having, you know, I mean, big stars. We're having great mm. persons uh, coming to inspire these children to ensure that, uh, I mean, let them know that they can be anything they yes, want to become. Yes, and their and life is not just about the slums. Exactly. And they can actually, so, you know, so, so move beyond great. the slums and become anything they want to be in life, really. But because usually, you know, that uh, when you talk about having some of the stars, it's usually when you have music, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the music industry, and then yeah. you're going to be having artists performing, or usually sports. So uh, it's just a good one to see that this is happening and it doesn't happen at a time where yeah, there's a special occasion yeah. so yes it's great he looked like it's a, a good one good one patrice ever and um i'm i'm glad that um, the children are actually channeling you know positive energies into something very productive you know chess and all of that because uh, if you know what oshidi or oshidi underbird is associated with it's always about um you know the the negative stories uh the the uh, the hoodlums attacks and of course um, all of them um, the vices that come out of there but over time we've been getting to hear and see you know wonderful uh, bright um, inspiring stories coming out from Oshidi and indeed the slums and it is something very 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 cheering yeah mm. Yes. Yeah, so good luck to all of that, uh, to all of them at Oshodi. We'll move away from that. Now, another story that is trending, uh, the governor of River State uh, it, uh, is still in the news. Uh, yesterday, uh, he was in a video where he supposedly, uh, you know, made his intention to run, although it's, it's actually been argued whether he, he actually said he, uh, you know, wants to contest. But then again, he says something, and I quote, uh, give me your vote, give me your vote. Mercy, a lot of people are actually indicating interest. A lot of people say they want to salvage um, the soul of Nigeria, and they feel that um, they need to deliver Nigeria out of the doldrums. Um, they said uh, the APC has placed up, you know, Nigerians in jail. So, so with the issue of um, anyone, anyone, when I mean anyone, including uh, Governor Yesom Wike of River State declaring his intention, whether that's an argument, whether he really declared his intention, is the fact that everybody has a right, you know, as long as it's within the, uh, you know, constitution, you're acting within the stipulated, uh, you know, conditions that are put out, you're not a criminal, and that can be proven and what have you, even though that's also uh, a conversation for another day, yeah. right? But everyone has a 
a right to declare, you know, say, hey, I want to become injured. I mean, you have a right to vote and be voted for. That's how the Constitution puts it. So, yes, if uh, Governor Yesam Wike decides to, you know, declare his intention to become president, he's acting within his constitutional right. And that uh, he calls, you know, it doesn't really call for um, any kind of buzz because you can also say, hey, I want to become president. I've told you I, before, I told you you're going to campaign for me. I don't you said that. you're not partisan. Uh, okay, so moving away from that, I, 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 I practically listened to that. So I think it, it was within, because listening to that conversation that transpired, he was in Ben West State, Makadi to be precise, for whatever the event was. And he, he was asked a question. What will you do differently to change, you know, the narrative in the country? This is paraphrasing mm. because you have been challenging and cr been very critical mm -hmm. of the things that are going. And he, that's when he mentioned the fact that, you know, um, this is what it is. But he's going to, uh, he's declaring to become a president of Nigeria. And he's doing this in this state because he has a relationship, you know, with Benue uh, people or with the state and then that's why that's what, that's when he stated that. So in the bid to actually answer a question is when he said it, and he said it's the first time he's making you know this uh, statement or making such intention. It's something that he was been nursing in his mind, and he's been hearing a lot of you know rumors and all of that. But he's, he was saying it you know for the very first time in Benue State. So I, I'm I'm hoping if um, that's something to go by. Yeah. I know that it's not doctored. I listened to that voice a couple of times, and I can really tell that. I mean, you must be a fantastic mimicker to want to. Mimic Make, yes, some week, uh, you know, he has a unique voice, and so you can hear him say that again and again. Uh, but so, so, like I said, uh, fingers are crossed. We see how all of this, you know, pans out. And prior to this time, let's not forget that we have a lot of people. I mean, so many other persons that we have said, uh, you know, are making intentions or have plans of coming in as president. Some people say, oh, they have really not declared. But gradually, we're seeing that things are unfolding. And but we're here to watch this space and, of course, bring you up to speed with what's making the rounds across board. Uh, who else is going to be declaring his or her intention? It might be Justin. It might be me. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, that's as much as we can take on top trend. And so, all right, well, we need to see more declaration, but we just need to see competent people, who, you know, people who have um, pedigree, people who have um, the interest of um, Nigeria and Nigerians you know, at heart, you know, not just someone who just wants to just uh, play, uh, pay lip service at the end of the day, uh, nothing to show after he is, uh, you know, declared and president but let's just leave it at that for now we'll take a quick break and uh, when we come back uh, we'll go straight to the dailies and see what um, the papers are saying this morning in a moment we'll be right back with off the press stay with us <laughs>